What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and this time with the latest Evolution X build of Android 12 L and this is the 5th May 2022 build. Talking about the change logs, yes you can read it out from right here but let me tell you there have been almost 5 to 6 updates in the past week. So yeah, the update count on the Evolution X has been getting up and up but here on the latest build almost everything has been fixed and this ROM is one of the most stable experience that you can get out of your Redmi K20 Pro at least on Android 12 L. But that is totally my opinion and if you want to look at the change logs again you can read the ROM changes. There is the color coded battery indication for landscape icon here it shows. But yes there are these bring back landscape battery styles and stuff. I'll show you everything from the customization section again because I think the last time I didn't show you those. But here this time I'm gonna show you everything. So do watch the video till the end. And of course this ROM includes ZApps in the ROM file itself. And if you have no idea how to flash this ROM, you can check out the cards or the description box. So here in the about phone section, we have the Evolution X logo up top. The Evolution X version shows as Snow version 2, 6.3.1 for Raphael. And the build date you can see that from right there. And again, the security patch you're getting over here is the latest of May 5th, 2022. And today itself is May 5th, 2022. And I would say Evolution X has been really, really consistent with the security patch updates. And this time it's no different. The stock kernel is the Soviet star kernel. And here is the build date again mentioned. The maintainer is of course Stalex and we have the build number and stuff over here. Let me jump into the system. This is how it looks like. We have the system updater and you can check for updates from right here. And it does work. I have seen that working. And here in the gestures, we have the quick tap or this is the back tap option. You can enable that if you want to. The quickly open camera is there and in the settings of the gestures, we do have the pill length customization. Then we also have the extended swipe actions. Then the back gesture haptic and the gesture animation and stuff. Everything is working fine and the haptic feedback overall all over the UI is just amazing. And of course you can swipe up from these corners to actually get the assistant. The two button and three button navigation both are there. We have the one handed mode. The swipe break screenshot is also there. And let me actually show you this swipe break screenshot actually has the share edit and delete option and it does work super fine. And here let me go back we have the front camera settings. There we get the pop up camera sound disabling option or we have all these sound options if you want to enable that for some reason. The camera LED you can of course disable from right here. And this is how the home screen actually looks like. To the left of the home screen we have the Google's Discover page and of course it's still the pixel launcher. But this launcher if you want to go into the settings this is how it looks like. We have the suggestion disabling option but then again there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. But of course you can swipe up to get the app drawer and swipe down to get the quick setting panel. This is how the quick setting panel looks like. And the widgets in the home screen are working totally fine. And the animations and stuff if you want to see those yes they are working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever but let me tell you this is in the white theme or this is not the dark theme but still the quick setting panel stays dark that's how it is as of right now but here the notification panel switches to white in the white theme or the light theme but yes the quick setting panel just stays dark even in the dark theme and the light theme and of course you can edit and add the multiple toggles that you want to add there are plethora of toggles options like you can see it from right here so here we have the night light, the hotspot and the always on display toggle. Then the volume panel option is there. The FPS info also appears and it appears right there, not too much to the top left of the screen. So that's great. We have a nearby share. The screen recording is there. We have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. And the animations, if you're noticing, are from Android 12 L. And of course, they work beautifully. Even the power menu animation, if you're noticing. And we have the advanced reboot, you can directly reboot to the recovery from right here. And we have the battery saver and stuff, then the do not disturb the data saver. The sound toggle is there, the reboot toggle is there, the desetting is there and there is the high brightness. And there is this anti-flicker mode too, I am not really sure this is from for what. Like the desetting is anti-flicker I think, but yes there is another anti-flicker separate toggle. And there is a Google Home controls, so you can control your smart devices if you want to. And of course, if I show you the wallpapers and styles, let me actually go here. This is how it looks like and I'm using the default Evolution X wallpaper over here. And of course, you can change the colors to these basic colors or the wallpaper colors. The dark theme, you can enable it from right here. And we have app grid options up to 5x5. Five five. Opening up apps and stuff are pretty smooth, no issues whatsoever. Everything is like just buttery smooth over here. You won't be having any kind of issues at all while opening apps or switching between apps, it's very very smooth experience overall. In the settings panel, this is how it looks like. We have the Evolver on top and there you get the customizations. Of course, this ROM has huge amount of customizations. 
there are plethora of it and in the themes we have the black theme the monet theme engine and we can customize even more like the white luminance the chroma factor all these options are there even custom color options are there drag theme you can enable from right here and we get plethora of fonts and as you can see the font options are plenty and you can choose from any of them and we have the icon pack changing option it actually shows which icons are which we have the signal icons then the wi-fi icons too then we also have the icon shapes and as you are noticing plethora of icon shapes are there too the status bar and inside status bar items we have the headset bluetooth etc icons of course you can enable these or disable these as you are liking and the clock style i have been using the center clock that is actually working fine yes i have customized the clock and there is that auto hide option we have the clock second option then the am pm style date font position changing option everything is working perfectly fine the traffic indicator is there but i use a separate app for that inside battery icon this is great that we have this next to the icon battery percentage but then again we also get the icon right or icon left for the landscape icons and this is actually working perfectly fine if you're noticing this right kind of landscape battery icon looks very beautiful also you can see i have connected this bluetooth headset right here and it is showing up the battery status over there and if you want to see the actual percentage you can go into the quick setting panel there you can see the battery percentage of your bluetooth device if it's connected and there is this toggle colorful battery icon actually let me enable that for this we have to restart the system ui so i'll just do that and get back so i'm not really sure how this actually works because i have enabled this and restarted the ui and restarted the device too but the battery color is not kind of changing i am not really sure how it works but yes the option is there it may work when the battery gets lower because my battery is about 95 percent health so it's almost full let me scroll down we have the logo option and you can have the custom logos then there is the show 4g instead of lte and the vault e and vo wi-fi icons too and let me tell you vault e should be working perfectly fine here if you insert a vault e sim and here i haven't inserted a sim but yeah vault e calling should be working perfectly great here we have the bluetooth battery stats and the mic and camera privacy indicator then the location privacy indicator and stuff combined signal icons you can enable these if you want to in the notifications we have the reticker then the ambient edge lighting the heads up is there and we have the notification count then we also have the battery light you can enable it for the do not disturb mode that's the pop-up camera led and we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect so in call vibrations are there too also we have this blink flashlight for incoming call feature and it actually works fine it's there in MIUI too let me go back we have the quick setting panel customization you have the date then the secure quick setting toggles then we have the artwork media background and the brightness slider position you can have it on show always or only show expanded and we have the position changing option of the brightness slider so that's great and we have the eight tile icons and the clear all notification button is there and all the button style and stuff you can actually change i think from here so this is great and we have the power menu here we have the disable power menu on lock screen option for privacy and there is the advanced reboot option you can enable it if you want to and all the other options in the gestures we get the brightness control so you can swipe or slide a finger on the status bar to actually control or adjust the brightness of the screen and that functionality is still working super fine and here we also get the long press power button to toggle torch that works fine we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the status bar as well let me go back we have the lock screen customization here we get the udfps and there are the icon pickers and as you can see all the icons are there and huge amount of icon options that you can choose from and we have the udfps animation and there are plenty of animations that you can choose from and all these work super fine if you want to enable or use them and here we have the hide status bar option then the media art work and stuff the ripple effect and the fingerprint error and authentication vibration options here we have the buttons there we have the on-screen nav bar and this is for some reason enabled but yeah it's not enabled because i'm using the full screen gestures and here we have the navigation gesture second there we have the show volume panel on the left side by the way this is how the volume panel actually looks like and this is great that we can actually switch the volume panel output device from right here whenever you are connected to a bluetooth device and you can actually adjust the volume on the bluetooth headset too from right here this is a great feature in my opinion and all the animations over here looks very beautiful here we have the keyboard cursor control the click to take partial screenshot and stuff and we have the misc settings here we have the game space so if you want to enable the gaming mode you can then we have the launch music app on headset connect the screen of animation you can change then if you scroll down more we have the unlimited google photos the unlock higher fps in games and we have the unlock higher quality streams for amazon prime or netflix 
and if you scroll down more we have the pulse option and we have the allow application downgrade option for some reason if you want to enable that you can then we have the usb configuration option and you can set it to by default going into the file transfer with that you can just plug in your usb cable which is connected to your pc it will directly go to file transfer mode or the mtp mode you don't have to change it every time whenever you connect a usb cable and of course you can donate to the developers from the team option now let's talk about the battery settings this is how the battery settings looks like and yes the battery settings right now i just love it because it has the charging cycles finally and i think it was added in the last update with this one too the charging cycles and stuff everything is showing up we got the battery temperature design battery capacity the current battery capacity and also the charging cycle and you can see this is the original battery that i'm using over here it has got almost 700 plus charging cycles even with that it is holding up pretty well i'll show you how it's holding up here we have the battery charge warning option if you want to enable that we have the idle manager the adaptive battery preference also you can see the battery usage from right here but let me show you i have tested the battery with the aku battery app and with that if i scroll down i have been getting about six hours plus of screen on time which is decent i would say for a device which is more than three years old with the original battery and that is just great and in the health for me it's showing that it's about at 71 percent battery health so yes it has degraded quite a lot so if you have replaced your k20 pros battery it should give you more than eight hours of screen on time but here even with this old of our original battery i'm getting six hours plus of screen on time which is decent or pretty great actually now not to forget we are on android 12 l also the fast charging should be working fine here you shouldn't worry about that let me go back we have the sound and vibration settings if you scroll down we have the smart pause and stuff then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option if you scroll down more we have the touch vibration and stuff then we have the me audio direct and from here you can enable it and we have the youth edition and stuff and all these other presets the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is amazing on this rom also we have the preset option we have the bass booster preset then we also have the hi-fi audio option overall the audio quality via the headphone jack or the speakers or even the bluetooth headsets has been really really awesome so no issues in this rom with the sound quality then we also get the clear speaker option if you want to clear your speakers if it had some dust you can definitely clear it out with this feature in the display settings we have the custom display settings like the dc dimming and the high brightness mode both are there but for some reason again the high brightness mode is not working not really sure why it's happening but yeah earlier it used to have we have the brightness level from right here and the extra dim option is there and we have the lock screen customization we have this face unlock option when swiping on the lock screen and stuff i'll show you the face unlock speed and stuff here we have the always on display enabling option let me go back we have the dark theme then the dpi kind of customization the nightlight option is there also there is the display color mode you can actually put it to display mode to off or outdoors and stuff okay so it's actually working i was wrong this display mode you can actually change it this was set to automatic so i was not outdoors so that's why it's didn't detect that i am outdoors so yeah whenever you get outdoors you can switch it to this outdoor bright sun mode and right now as you are noticing it's working perfectly fine there is this anti flicker mode too you can enable it if you want to then there is the rgb control of the screen and we have the picture adjustment from here you can control the hue saturation intensity and contrast in detail so that's just awesome i would say we have the double tap to wake and the pocket detection also the wake up on plug you can get now let's jump into the security this is how the security section looks like and i have set a pin of course and in the settings we have the quick unlock option if you want to use that and here we have the face unlock and fingerprint i have added two fingerprints over here also the face unlock i have added and here we have the swiping up on lock screen to actually use the face unlock but before i do that let me actually go into the advanced settings from here and in the stock lock options you get the app lock too and here if i tap the fingerprint scanner this is how the app lock looks like and you can actually select whichever apps that you want to select and finally we have the google photos working perfectly fine with this app lock as you can see the photos appear yes i have locked that too and here let me actually go back and lock some particular apps like this and here we have the auto lock timeout option so you can set the auto lock timeout from right here we have the collapse notification from here and the enable biometrics option right now let me actually show you the actual fingerprint scanner speed but before that this is how the always on display looks like and if i double tap to wake that is actually working perfectly fine again and from this always on display i just tap and hold on the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks let me show you up close the fingerprint scanner speed So yes, this is one of the fastest fingerprint scanner experience that you can get on top of Android 12L. Right now, let me show you the face unlock speed. 
and here if I point the device towards my face once I swipe up on the lock screen then the front camera pops out and it unlocks the device of course. Let me show you one more time. So yes the face unlocking speed is great but yes for this device it takes a little while because the front camera is motorized and it takes a couple of seconds to actually pop out the front camera and here we have the app lock and this is how the app lock is actually working. We have the touch the fingerprint scanner option and once you touch that as you can see the app actually unlocks. So yeah the app lock is working perfectly fine here too. And of course if you are willing to see the split top and stuff let me actually show you that from right here. If I am doing this the split top is working perfectly fine. So you shouldn't be worrying about the split top not working or something like that. The split top feature is working perfectly great here. No issues whatsoever. And of course you can go to the home screen and there we have both of these apps together in the recent panel too. And if you want to clear all the apps you can go all the way to the left on the recent panel then from here you can clear all the apps or there is the screenshot option then the select option and stuff if you want to use those. Here the stock camera is very basic this is the old kind of Google camera and it doesn't take like very good quality pictures. It takes very basic pictures I would say. So that's why I have installed the G cams over here. I have been using this Yonix version of the G cam. It's working perfectly fine even with the like ultra wide angle lens and with the 1x the main sensor that is working fine too. Also there is a 2x telephoto zooming option or the zooming lens actually working perfectly fine. Also if you want to switch to the front camera as you are noticing the front camera is working great with the G cam no issues and there is the night set option too that too should be working perfectly fine here. As you are noticing I can actually customize that to however you want to and yes you can download all these Z cams from the description you shouldn't worry about that and even with that the portrait mode selfie and stuff they should be working great. Now talking about the overall performance of the ROM yes the performance of this ROM was great and the benchmarks you can just notice. I got about 5,50,000 of Antutu score that's just awesome for this device and here are the Geekbench score and the CPU stress test that I have done over here on this particular build. Now talking about the basic things yes the safety net passes right out of the box here so you can use banking apps without any issues. Yes you get the L1 certification right out of the box here so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. So what do I think about the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 12 L and it comes with the latest May 5th 2022 security patch. This is one of the best options that you can definitely go with and I can still recommend going with Evolution X ROM. Yes I have been a fan of this ROM because of the amazing updates and this is one of the fastest Android experience that you can get on your Redmi K20 Pro right now in May 2022. So that pretty much wraps up this video guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.